Greetings, everyone. We'll start at uh, 1215 Central Time. Glad you're here. Feel free to um, say hello in the comments as we get started. We will start in uh, five minutes, um, but we're glad to have anybody who's joining us. Um, this is Church of the Holy Communion, our noonday prayer service on Wednesday. And I'm Sarah Cowan. I am um, a seminarian at Virginia Theological Seminary. Holy Communion is my sending parish, and I am doing work remotely for them. Um, this summer, and so um, I'm just delighted to be here with you all. So if you're just joining us, feel free to um, say hello in the comments here um, or send us a thumbs up as we go along. There will be an opportunity to um, share your intercessions during the appropriate part of the service. So um, just know that you're able and welcome to um, share anything that is on your heart in terms of thanksgivings or intercessions or supplications uh, that might be on your heart and mind. And so you can do that silently as we go or aloud as we go or in the comment section. So again, we're glad you're here and we will begin at 12.15 Central Time. just been sharing with people who are joining us um, that we will begin in just a few minutes. We have a Wednesday New Day service um, with healing prayers every Wednesday at Church of the Holy Communion. I'm Sarah Cowan and I am the seminarian working here this summer. I am just finishing my second year at Virginia Theological Seminary and I'm um, whether you are a member of Holy Communion or a visitor joining us today, we're very glad you're here. Um, if you do want to get prepared, uh, we will be doing the order of service found on page 103 of the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. I put in the uh, description, I hope you can see it, uh, the online address for um, the Book of Common Prayer. It's bcponline.org. So if you would like to look online and follow along, if you don't have a Book of Common Prayer with you, um, that is fine if you'll go to the Daily Offices section and you'll find Noonday Prayer there. Um, you're also just welcome to follow along and listen and let the words wash over you as we pray. You do not, do not feel like you have to be looking at something while we do this service.
For those of you who are just joining us, we will begin um, just in a moment. I'm glad to see a couple friends here online, and um, if you're new among us, we're glad you're here as well. Uh, this is a live stream for New Day Prayers coming to you from Church of the Holy Communion, although I, in Memphis, Tennessee, although I am actually physically located in Alexandria, Virginia. I am um, a seminarian, Sarah Cowan, who is working on finishing um, my divinity degree and working for Whole Church of the Holy Communion this summer, albeit remotely, mostly. So um, if you've never been here, welcome. And um, if you're a parishioner at Holy Communion, we're so glad you're here. Um, feel free to say hello and um, identify yourself in the comments, but also feel free to just enjoy the words and the prayers that we do today. Um, I think we will begin with a moment of silence in just a second, but in case you missed it, we are following the order of service found on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer, the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. You can also find this online at bcponline.org. Um, so if you do like to follow along, feel free, but you're also welcome to just listen and um, listen as we pray. Again, welcome. Let's have a small moment of silence and then we'll begin. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please feel free to join me in Psalm 121, found on the next page, 104. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in. From this time forth, forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Thanks be to God. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'm going to offer a small reflection. Um, this is something that I wrote earlier this spring, and um, it seemed appropriate for me to uh, share it, modify it a little bit, and then share it for these times. So um, I'll offer you a small reflection on our times. I have been thinking a lot about breathing. Early in March, I was exposed briefly to a person who tested positive for the coronavirus. And so I joined a small group here on campus at the seminary who voluntarily self-quarantined, although I had no symptoms. I self-quarantined for the better part of a week, 
And then I started to read news stories about the exponential spread in Italy, the conflicting information from healthcare providers, and worse, the many stories about the spread from asymptomatic accidental carriers. And soon I entered a near weekend of panic, or a weekend of near panic, um, as I was paralyzed with fear that the advice that we received was too little and too late. And I was spinning with the idea that our family might have been responsible for further spread in our larger community of Alexandria, Virginia. Thankfully, we tightened up our family's self-isolation and I never did show any symptoms and neither did my family. But I was particularly surprised and disturbed at how paralyzed I was in the midst of that crisis. It was so great that I even found myself unable to pray. In fact, the only thing that I really could do that resembled prayer was to breathe. Now, um, typically I do some breath prayers with some very intentional and prayerful words that go along with that. Um, but I found that I really couldn't even do that. So truly the only thing that I could do is to breathe and sort of say in as I breathed in and out as I breathed out. And for about five days, that was my prayer. In out, in, and out. Breathing is a funny, conflicted thing. It means everything to life. It's the sound of a new baby being born. And God created this very good world by breathing over deep chaos. And breath also defines death. We seem to know this especially at this time. We've seen the world collectively hold its breath as the coronavirus races from country to country and city to city and town to town. We've seen patients fight for breath on ventilators and we've also known that some patients don't even have the chance to fight for breath because they live in circumstances that do not allow them access to the health care that would provide that. And we've watched with horror as George Floyd pleaded to keep his very own life's breath. And in a country that welcomes the teeming masses yearning to breathe free, as is said on the space of the Statue of Liberty, we are just starting to acknowledge that so many in our nation are not free and equal and safe because of the sins of racism and white supremacy. And so the same complexity and paradox is present also in our scripture and our tradition. The Messiah is born a humble baby. And Jesus, a prophet king, enters Jerusalem, not on a war horse, but on a humble beast of burden. And here is God's son who emptied himself to become a servant, to become obedient to death, even on a cross. And here are we, here are we, capable in one breath of shouting Hosanna and capable of the next breath shouting crucify. So what do we do with this maddening complexity and this paradox? There are deep questions that hang in the balance between the breathing in and the breathing out. Questions about the nature of God, about suffering, about God's power and our human nature and Christ. And I think that sometimes breathing in and out is a place to begin. In and out. Breathing in, I accept God's good gifts. 
Breathing out, I accept my mortal nature. Breathing in, I remember the suffering at the heart of our Christian story. Breathing out, I remember that he is risen right now, right now. Breathing in, I acknowledge my sinful nature and breathing out, I accept the gift of grace and accept the baptismal promise to seek and serve Christ in all persons. Breathing in, I see that blessings abound and breathing out, I mourn for the brokenness of our world and I ask God to guide me in the work that I must do. In my worry and my stress over COVID-19, as I attempted to pray and found that all I could really do was breathe. What came to me and calmed my anxiety was a phrase that has become an important touchstone for me. The phrase is carved in Latin on the uh, door of the home, the, the door above, the stone above the door of the home of psychoanalyst Carl Jung. And it translates to the following. Called or not, God is present. Called or not, God is present. And so in the midst of the complexity and paradox, in the midst of evil and grace, in the midst of sickness and health, in the midst of prayer without ceasing and no prayer at all. In the midst of shouts of victory and shouts of crucify, whether called or not, God is as close as our very breath. In and out. In and out. We need not be afraid of the chaos and the questions and the complexity. The kingdom of God is at our doorstep right this very minute. The liberating and life-giving Christ is here, present now, alive, still breathing. Christ is here to show us how to love if we stop to listen. Amen. Continuing on page 106. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of all of give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. At this time I invite your own prayers. You can do this several ways. You can um, say them silently in your own heart. You can say them aloud wherever you are. 
and you can add them to the comments here on this Facebook page. Um, I invite your prayers for our church, for our clergy leaders, our bishop, our clergy of Church of the Holy Communion, and our, our Diocese of West Tennessee, and all bishops and clergy, and all lay leaders. I invite your prayers for our nation, for our president, for our governor, for our mayor, for all regional and international leaders, that they may be guided by wisdom and justice and mercy. I invite your prayers for those who are close to us, our family and friends. And I invite our prayers for those who are strangers, that we may know that they are neighbors also. And I invite your prayers for those who are suffering. Those who are sick. Those who are victims of persecution or injustice. Please feel free to say them out loud. In the silence of your hearts or in the comments here. We also pray for those on our parish prayer list, the Roberts family, Beth Wingarden, Emily, Joyce, Will and Kathy, Kate, Simon and family, Zermain and family, Liza and Dave, Martha, Martha, Lane, Jed, Stan, Clayton and Janine, Jean, Francis, Dan, the Muller family, Earl, Jim, Harmony, McKay, Tim, Diana, Beth, Lauren, Dottie, Faith, Lee, Robert, Valerie, Woodis, Lauren, Connie, Fred, Barbara, Peg, Rudy, Manetri, and all those affected by COVID-19 and those who serve them. For all those in the armed forces, particularly Tracy, Fred, Mac, Sally, Dan, Benjamin, David, James, Ross, Bennett, Timothy, Zach, Peyton, and Noel. And for those who have died, may they rest in peace and rise in glory, Kelly, Elizabeth, Henry, Susie, Roberta, Priscilla. Again, please feel free to add any thanksgivings or intercessions in our comments or say them aloud, or in the silence of your hearts. We lay them all before Jesus, and we ask his prayer and guidance as we move forward into the day. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. 
Regard not the sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us today. Look forward to seeing more of you as the summer progresses. And again, if you do have any individual prayer requests that you would like to speak with the clergy about, please feel free to call our parish or send an email to one of our clergy. Um, we thank you very much for joining us today, and we hope you have um, a good rest of the afternoon. Blessings. <laughs>